Hey everybody, it's Steve Steele. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you Digital Performer 9 and Vienna Ensemble Pro 6 that was just released. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you from a blank Digital Performer document. Let's just have a few things set up, but it's just for this uh, screen recording, that's all. And set up the complete template, compose something, mix it down. So from very beginning, to end as if you just bought the software and you installed it, pretty much. Okay, so let's get busy and build something. I want to give a quick thanks to os10daily.com who did a nice little write-up on my studio a while back, and I'll post a link to that below. I also want to thank Rob at Bare Feats. I'll post a link to his site. You should check it out if you're a Mac user. Learn a lot of crazy stuff. And I also want to thank the guys at Mo2Nation.com. And that's it for today. Let's get started. So with each release of Digital Performer, of course, Motu adds cool new features. Um, one of them, which was added in 9, was a way to create tracks. I use this, but I still prefer instrument with options because I've been doing it this way for a long time. So that's the way I'm going to set up my instruments. So that was a Shift Option Command I. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add four instances of Vienna Ensemble Pro MAS, which is the digital performer version, stereo, four MIDI tracks, you know, or I'm going to keep it simple because um, we're in a hurry, and a track folder for each. Okay, so I quickly set up the instances. They all launched. Doing one at a time, so I'm setting up the winds and the brass right now. Now I'm setting up the percussion. And I'm setting up the strings. So I load all the strings I want. Um, I assign them colors. Um, I preserve them, decouple them. All that wonderful Vienna Ensemble stuff. It's really great that they have tabs now. They're really great. I mean, I didn't mind using spaces, but uh, tabs are great. Okay, um, what I'm doing now is I'm creating in the uh, first measure, actually I have a, a minus one measure um, where I insert CCs so all the instruments are even when they start playing because uh, the MIDI chases back to that. If, if you know what that means, then you know what it means. If you don't, you don't. Okay, so I'm just setting up some CCs for some of the instruments that I'm using. I decided that on the percussion, I was going to use LAD by Audiobro and mix it with VSL. And that's what I did. So I think I believe the, uh, the bass drum is an ostinato um, in lad. It's quite nice, actually. The snares, which that's what we're looking at right now, these are rudiments that I have saved as clipping files. Um, I have Notion on my iPad Pro, Notion iOS, and I entered all the uh, all the drum rudiments and Man, Notion does a great job of uh, getting it right. They feel great. So when you transfer them to your DAW, in my case, uh, either MIDI file or Music XML, the feel is spot on, accents and everything. So once you memorize the, uh, the, the rudiments, what they sound like, and you can put combinations together, then you've got it. Percussion uh, writing is great and it's pretty easy once you get into it like that. 
Um, here's a timpani part. I didn't do much with the timpani in this one because the bass drum is so prominent. Okay, uh, for strings. So what I wanted to do was in the lower strings, I wanted to do some divisi. So I used Session Strings Pro, which is an odd choice, but you know, they're basically chamber strings. So what that, that allowed me to have a separate set of uh, cello and basses to do something else here in a second. This piece has a lot of low end and some counterpoint in the low end. So, you know, those sound okay. If I had more time, I could have uh, really dialed, dialed them in, but uh, they do okay. All right, so what I used for the uh, other cellos and basses, I didn't use chamber, which I should have, um, but that's okay. I, I went and I used uh, cinematic strings. Um, which aren't that big, so, you know, it kind of worked out, but they sound huge, actually, so you'll hear it in a minute. Okay, so, um, there was a solo viola there just a second ago. With all my strings, I always use first chair instruments, and I always enter them by playing them in, um, whether it's my keyboard controller or my guitar controller. Um, I want the first chair to just slightly give it a, you know, a human feel. Okay, so now working on the brass, and here I'm I'm creating some counterpoint between the horns and the trombones, which are taking over the melody at this point. They're taking it away from the um, cello and basses. The viol is doing a uh, tr uh, trill, I believe. Okay, so here are the violins. Violins one and two. I used LAS LS, which is the uh, Sordino or Consordino, and they took in the third part, which is you know two thirds through. They took over the melody and the harmony, and here I'm creating the counterpoint for uh, violins one and two. Because Laz has auto divisi, it's real easy just to put them on the same MIDI channel, and uh, you know, if in a pinch, you can do that. Not not too many libraries do that convincingly, like Laz does. Laz is still the king of uh, auto divisi and legato. I mean, seriously, it's crazy. All right, and here's like a little last minute um, thing with the trumpets which sounded really good, gave it some energy at the end. And um, I wish I would have done something a little bit earlier with the trumpets. There's a, a little thing coming up where I add um, a two octave scale run in the flutes and followed by uh, the harp doing glissando. And I should have done something um, sort of stabby with the uh, trumpets at that point right there um, you'll see it in a second so, uh, so one thing about center brass that I love are the um, the chords um, center orc is great not too many people have that that's like a secret weapon you can do so much with center orc it's a cheap little library um that has the whole orchestra playing chords and and some other stuff and it's really great. Um, but right here I'm I'm just doing horn chords and they recorded a lot of them. Really good stuff. That's the worth the price of admission right there. Um, let's see. Looks like I'm just fixing up the uh, the cellos and basses, and now the uh, snare drum. Okay, um, now I'm, I'm doing my first stems here. Um, there's still some parts missing. I come back in a minute, and um, 
I finished, I polished it up, I had some stuff, and I cleaned some stuff up. So you're about to hear that right now. Okay, so here I am with the finished composition. So let's play it real quick. Throughout this whole process, Digital Performer and Vienna Ensemble have hung in there like champs. No problems at all. Let me go ahead and just record these stems the old fashioned way. Okay, so we start with the low strings taking the melody, or the first theme. Then the horns and the trombones come in with the theme. Flute and a harp. A little break and then bam. Violins are full. Horns are playing big chords and the winds are nice and loud. Driving to a really big cadence. I think that's important in music. Um, gotta have those, uh, gotta have the ability to um, have strong cadences, so. Okay, we're gonna get into some tips. First, system specs. So, since I haven't made a video in a while, let me just go over my system specs, because they've changed. Okay, so, this is actually a 2009 Mac Pro. But, it's one of those where the firmware has been upgraded to the 2010 model. I installed new CPUs. So that's a 12 core at 3.46 gigahertz. This one has a 48 gigabytes of RAM. The startup disk is a, um, a Samsung SM951 and it's in slot three, uh, PCIe slot three. And I've also got, uh, yeah, I got an R9. But storage wise, I have a RAID. Let's see. So it's this one. This is awesome. So this is actually three SM951s in one card called a squid in slot two. It's actually, I need to, I need to remove about that many samples. It's way too tight. So I sh you shouldn't go above about that mark on solid state drives. Um, and there's also something regarding trim with the Apple Ray driver. 
Um, I'll make a different video about that. Um, but anyway, this thing reads at, I get what, 4,800, so 4,800 megabytes a second reads, and about half that for writes. It's pretty crazy. It's fast enough that with Contact and with the Vienna Instruments Pro player that you can use it for streaming if you need to save on RAM. Okay, hear the hiss. Know what it is? So I'll give you a hint. If you're a Vienna Ensemble Pro Pro, you would know exactly what this is. So I have four instances of Vienna Ensemble. I've also got it sent to a reverb bus. I'm always going to set the reverb to pre-fader. But the hiss is still there. What could it be? Okay. So when you open a new instance of Vienna Ensemble, by default, it adds a room tone. It's getting quieter. Noise gone, right? So watch out for that. <laughs> I had a couple mix downs where I had four room tones going on at the same time and I wasn't really paying attention and it's like, man, that sounds really noisy. Yep. So uh, you only really need one if you're gonna use it. And in the mixer, You can turn, well, let me come over here to the left. Sorry, I'm moving around so fast. You can turn room tone on and off. So right now it's actually using resources. Um, and now's a good time to demonstrate that. So hold the thought. So since I muted this, I'm not going to use it. All right, so I'm going to take its, I'm going to disable it. So now this room tone is not is is disabled and it's not taking up CPU resources. So I could even delete the channel. So um, if I want I could just delete channel. Excuse me, right there, or to hit your delete key. But for now, I'm just going to disable. Okay, but this one I'm going to leave on. And I can turn it up, and so you can get plenty of room tone. Just double click that to get that back to zero. Okay. All right, so if you set up several instances and you're bussing them back to your DAW and you hear a lot of hiss, can't figure it out, that's what it is. I wonder how many people that's happened to. So that's it for this test of Digital Performer 9.1 and Vienna Ensemble Pro 6 together. I went over a lot, tried to move as fast as I could. If you have any questions about anything, go for it. Ask away. And uh, hopefully another video will come up soon. I want to do another composition, something completely different from this, and then I want to do something with my iPad, something much more uh, synth-based, um, maybe sound design-oriented. So I'll do that coming soon. If you have any requests, let me know. If there's anything you'd like me to cover in particular, I will. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. hope it was helpful. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. All right? Take care.